Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my presentation on harder reacting masses problems. Uh, now, before you watch this, make sure you're comfortable with chemical symbols and formulas, how to calculate relative formula masses, the basics of the mole concepts, and how to do basic reacting masses problems. I've got videos on all of those, so make sure you check those out if you don't feel comfortable with that stuff first. Now, in this video, we're going to quickly recap moles, and then we're going to look at an analogy we can use to then work through the worked examples that we're going to see in a second. Now, the problems we'll be looking at on this presentation are harder because the substances we're going to be um, calculating with are not in one-to-one -one ratios. So I thought it makes sense to start with a um, sort of more everyday kind of example to get our head around the kind of ratio maths that we need. And then we can actually look at the actual chemical examples. So let's imagine you had a recipe in which you had five oranges and three lemons um, would be squeezed together to make some juice. So my question to you is, how many lemons would you need if you had 10 oranges? Now, most of you have probably just pretty easily said to yourself, well, I would need six lemons. And you'd be right. What about if you had 25 oranges? Well, again, probably most of you are OK with the idea that that would be 15 lemons. And what about two and a half oranges? Well, again, most of you have probably OK with the idea that that would be 1.5 uh, lemons. But how do you actually do that mathematically? What have you done to figure that out? What you've done is some ratio maths. And the way the ratio maths works is like this. You start, you say your lemons equals your number of oranges, which in this first example is 10, divided by the five oranges in the equation, okay, multiplied by the three lemons in the equation. Okay. Dividing 10 by 5 tells you how many lots of the recipe you can make. And then multiplying by 3 tells you how many lemons you need. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. Multiplied by 3 gives us 6 lemons. Again, what about with the uh, second one? So the lemons is equal to 25. Divide it by 5 because there's 5 oranges in the recipe. 25 divided by 5 means that you've got enough to make 5 lots of the recipe. So how many lemons would you need for five lots of the recipe? Multiply it by the three lemons in the recipe, and that would give you um, 25 divided by five is five. Multiply by three gives you 15 lemons. And for the last one, we're going to do the same thing again. We'll do 2.5 divided by five, which tells us we've got enough uh, oranges to make half of the recipe. And we multiply that by the three lemons we need, and that gives us one and a half lemons. So most of you can do that ratio maths intuitively when it's in a nice, um, you know, with, with, with things that are nice to work with, like oranges and lemons. We're going to be doing the exact same maths, but it will be with, you know, water and oxygen or something like that. But just hold this analogy in your head because the maths we'll be doing is the same. OK, so example one, what is the maximum mass of water H2O? that can be produced from 64 grams of oxygen. We're going to start off in the same way as before, calculate the moles of the known substance. Then rather than just stating our target, we actually need to calculate our target. Um, and then we're going to calculate the mass of that target. So let's, let's see how this pans out. Um, now, our target is what we're finding out. That's our water. And our known substance is the oxygen because we've got the mass for that. So we know it well. Um, so we can say the number of moles of our known, number of moles of O2 equals mass over MR, which equals um, the 64 grams in the question, divided by the MR of uh, oxygen, which is 32. And that gives us two moles of oxygen. 
and that is our first step done. So now we're going to calculate the number of moles of um, water using our ratio calculations. And it works like this. We're going to say the number of moles of H2O equals the number of moles of oxygen divided by one, because there's one oxygen in the equation, multiplied by two, because there are two waters in the equation. So this is two over one multiplied by two gives us four moles of water that we're going to make. So the last step then is to calculate the mass of that much water. And so the mass is going to be mass of H2O is the quantity in moles N multiplied by the relative formula mass, MR. So that is 4 multiplied by the relative formula mass, 18. And that will give us 72 grams of water as our final answer. Okay, example number two. What mass of hydrogen, H2, is required to produce 7.3 grams of hydrogen chloride, HCl? So again, we're being asked what mass of hydrogen. So that is our target. And we've been given the mass of hydrogen chloride. So that is our known substance. So we'll start by calculating the mass, so uh, the number of moles of hydrogen chloride. So we're going to say N, the quantity in moles of HCl, equals mass over MR. Now the mass of HCl in the equation is 7.3 grams. The MR given in the question is uh, 36.5 for HCl. So 7.3 divided by 36.5. And what we get then is an answer of uh, 0.2 moles of HCl. That's the first step done. So now we're going to move on to the second step where we do our ratio calculation. So we can say it works like this. The number of moles of um, what are we finding? We're finding um, H2, number of moles of H2 equals the number of moles of HCl divided by 2, because there are two HCls in the equation, multiplied by 1, because there's only one hydrogen in the equation. So we've just found the moles of HCl was 0.2, so it's 0.2 divided by 2, multiplied by 1, to give us 0.1 moles of hydrogen. So all we need to do, so that's the um, that's the number of moles of hydrogen found. So all we've got to do now is calculate its mass. So we can say the mass of H2 equals the quantity of moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. We just found the quantity of moles was 0.1 multiplied by the MR given in the question, which is 2. So 0.1 multiplied by 2 gives us 0.2 grams of hydrogen is the answer to this question. Example number three, a bit harder to, uh, harder again. So um, what is the maximum mass of ammonia, NH3, that can be produced from 12 grams of hydrogen, H2? So again, ammonia is the one we're finding. So that is our target. Um, and uh, the H2, we've got the mass for that, so that is our known substance. So we're going to start by calculating the quantity in moles of H2 because that is our known one. So I'm going to say number of moles of H2, in brackets like that, equals M over MR, which is going to be um, the mass from the question, 12, divided by the MR of hydrogen, which is 2. And that will give me 6 moles of hydrogen. First step done. Next step, the hard step, calculate the target, uh, the number of moles of the target substance, um, doing our ratio calculation. So we're going to say the number of moles of um, the NH3, which is our target, is going to be the number of moles of H2 divided by 3, because there are three H2s in the equation, multiplied by 2 because there are two NH3s in the equation. So this gives us 6 divided by 3 multiplied by 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Multiplied by 2 gives us 4 moles of NH3. And so then our final answer 
to find, so we've, we've calculated the number of moles of our target, so the mass of that target, the mass of NH3 equals quantity in moles multiplied by MR. We've just found our quantity in moles was 4, so it's going to be 4 multiplied by the MR of ammonia, which is 17. 4 multiplied by 17 gives us a final mass of 68 grams. Okay, let's step it up a gear. Um, we've got what mass of iron, Fe, is required to produce 48 grams of iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3. Now, why this is a little bit harder is because we aren't given the MRs, so we're going to need to use those ourselves. Uh, we're going to need to find those ourselves, so we'll come on to that in a second. Now, we're asking about the mass of iron, so that is our target. We're given the mass of iron 3 oxide, so that is our known substance. Um, so let's let's start with our MRs. So our MR of iron, Fe, is simply the atomic mass, which is 1 times Fe, i.e. Um, 1 times 56. So that just comes to 56, nice and easy. Um, and for our iron 3 oxide, a bit more involved this time, so we're going to say the MR of Fe2O3 equals 2 times Fe plus 3 times O, which is 2 times 56 um, for the iron, um, plus 3 times 16 for the O, and that comes to 160. So now we've got our MRs, we can treat this like we did the other two or the other three examples. So we'll start by calculating the number of moles of our known. So the number of moles of um, uh, Fe2O3, uh, I haven't presented that well, Oops, forgive me. The number of moles of Fe2O3 equals M over MR, um, which equals um, 48 over 160, which comes to 0 0.3 mole, excuse me, 0 0.3 moles of iron 2 oxide, iron 3 oxide. The next we do our ratio calculation. So we can say that the number of moles of um, Fe equals the number of moles of Fe2O3 divided by 2, because there are two of them in the equation, multiplied by 4, because there are four Fe's in the equation. So that gives me 0 0.3 over 2 multiplied by 4. 0 0.3 was the value we calculated a second ago, um, and that will give us 0 0.6 moles of Fe that we're making. So we've done the ratio calculation, we've done the hard bit. So the final thing then is to find the number of moles, uh, so the mass of that much iron. So we'll say mass equals quantity in moles multiplied by um, the MR, which is 0 0.6 that's the quantity of moles we just found. Multiplied by the MR for iron we found earlier was 56. So 0 0.6 multiplied by 56 gives us a final answer of 33.6 grams. And final uh, example, um, we've got this one. It looks hard, but we're just going to follow the exact same math we've done already. So we're going to say what mass of oxygen, O2, reacts with 21 grams of ethane C2H6. And again, we don't have the MRs. We're going to have to calculate them ourselves using the atomic masses there. So we don't know the mass of oxygen, so that is our target. We do know the mass of ethane, so that is our known. Um, and we don't know any MRs, so let's calculate those now. So we're going to say the MR of oxygen, O2, is 2 times O, which is 2 times 16 for O which gives me 32. And then the MR for our ethane C2H6 is equal to 2 times C added to 6 times H, which is 2 times 12 for carbon added to 6 times 1 for hydrogen. And so that is going to come to a total of 30. So now we can calculate the moles of our known substance, the ethane. So we can say the number of moles of ethane 
C to H6 equals M over MR. Now the mass of ethane in the question is 21 grams. We're going to divide that by the MR, which we just found there was 30. 21 divided by 30 equals 0.7 moles of ethane. Now we can calculate our moles of our oxygen target by using our ratio calculation. So we can say the number of moles of O2 equals the number of moles of um, ethane, C2H6, divided by 2, because there are two ethanes in the equation, multiplied by 7, because there are 7 O2s in the equation. So this gives us 0 0.7. That's the number of moles of oxygen that we just found out. Divided by 2 multiplied by 7, which gives us an answer of 2.45 moles of oxygen. So now the last step is to find its mass, which is, we just say the mass of O2 equals quantity in moles multiplied by MR. The quantity in moles we just found was 2.45. The MR we calculated earlier was 32, so 2.45 multiplied by 32 gives us a final answer of 78.4 grams. So that's the final example done, really well done if you followed them. Um, my suggestion to you now is to go back to the first example um, and try it yourself without listening to my instructions and see if you get the right answer and then just work through the other examples until you feel comfortable. That's it, the end. As always, well done for getting this far and thank you for listening.